Hi everyone, welcome back. It's the Louis Vuitton Princess and today I am going to be filming one of everyone's favorite videos. So I'm going to start with a little bit of an introduction um, just because this video is going to go on my YouTube and this is probably going to be one of my first big videos on YouTube. Um, I always found, so I used to do YouTube long ago. Um, and so I did YouTube long ago under a different account and then I kind of just moved away from YouTube and I started using Instagram and so my biggest following is on Instagram. Um, and so I stuck to Instagram for quite a few years. I didn't really use YouTube all that much. And so for a long time, Instagram had a platform called IGTV and I did lots of my filming there. Um, IGTV, for whatever reason in the past, like I think couple months, they just got rid of it entirely. So you can still find my videos on my page there. And I was kind of sad because I had all these videos, they were super well organized into categories and all of that. And <laughs> Instagram kind of just said, uh, middle finger to you. So nonetheless, I don't really care. My content is still there. My following is still there, but I really did want to get back into filming more Louis Vuitton videos. So here we are. Um, so for those of you guys here in YouTube land who do not know me or are not familiar with me, I am the Louis Vuitton princess. Um, also known as the pre-loved princess, also known as the queen of multicolor. I've gained lots of different names during my time here. Um, but really, I am just a 20-something year old who lives in America. And I started collecting Louis Vuitton when I was 17. I brought my first Louis Vuitton bag um, when I was 17 years old. And so I've been collecting for a couple years now, not a decade. I'm not that old, um, but I've been collecting for a few years now. So basically my sort of premise or basis in this community is that I really like to buy pre-loved. So as you guys can see from my collection behind me, it is a very heavily pre-loved collection. Lots of bags from the Y2K era. I really love Y2K um, fashion. I love Y2K bags, shoes, clothes. Unfortunately, I am a thicker girl. So Y2K clothes don't really work for me. You know, that was back in the era where everybody was like a size double zero you know and it's always funny how that changes how like there was like two decades where being a double zero was in and like now everybody has like massive fake butts it's kind of wild how all that changes but anyways y2k fashion y2k fashion and clothes clothes do not really work for me so my way of appreciating that era is bags and shoes and accessories um so over the years, I have amassed this collection that you see behind you. In this collection, I honestly have like lost track of how many bags I have. So I don't know if somebody wants me to do wants to do me a favor. As I go through this collection video, you can like tally up how many handbags I have. <laughs> that would be great. I've honestly lost track of how many handbags, wallets, accessories, SLGs. I really do need to take a day where I just like sit down and catalog it all. I might also do that. Um, but I've really lost track. Um, I started just like everyone else. I originally had like four bags. Um, I think it was a Sac Platt, uh, a DeVille, a Beverly GM. I originally had four, you know, older 90s monogram bags. Um, and over the years, I've gone the full spectrum. I have bags that I purchased new from the boutique. I have bags that are vintage collectibles. I have bags that are super rare. I have lots of limited edition, but I'd say my collection is prominently, predominantly Y2K. So somewhere between that like 2003 and like 2005 era. Um, I'm a giant Takeshi Murakami fan and Murakami Multicolor, um, Cherry Blossom, Cherries. I'm a very, very big Murakami fan, so that compromises a lot of my collection. Um, that is my favorite Louis Vuitton collection. Um, and so, yeah, 
I think that was a good introduction. Maybe I'll add a couple more things about myself. Um, so for starters, I always like to add that I am a self-made woman. Um, I am not, and again, this is really no shade, like really, this is no shade, but like, I think this is important. I'm not a housewife. I don't just have like a defense contractor husband. Um, and again, if that is your life, I'm happy for you. Like working is hard out here. Like, so if you don't have to work and you don't have to hustle and you have a man who just provides everything you ever wanted, you're winning, sis. So I don't say that with any shade. I just say that as like, I think it's important to share that like, you can still have all of these things and be on your own. Um, so I'm a self-made woman. I started buying and collecting this stuff back when I was in high school. I got really big into buying and selling when I was in college. I started my resale business um, when I was probably 18 and in college out of my dorm room. Um, and so this is a collection that I really built from the ground up. Like it was built from hard work, dedication, and a lot of really good deal finding. Um, because again, I will try to remember as I'm going through to share prices on everything, what I paid. Um, just because again, so many people see all these bags and they think that I'm like super rich or anything. And I'm really not like I can tell you from my spreadsheet, I think I paid about mm, I paid about 28,000, I think, for all of these bags. Um, and so you'll see very quickly that a lot of the pieces I have in my collection have gained a lot of value. But if you think about it in terms of, I paid $28,000, a little bit under a decade, um, as somebody who was also buying and selling and all of that good stuff, hustling, it's not unreasonable to see how I collected all of these bags. I did not pay retail price. And again, a lot of these bags were not super popular when I brought them. A lot of the multicolor Mirakami stuff, when I first brought it, it was very much so out. People were selling it for very cheap. So I also just brought a lot of bags at the right time. And so as a result, I brought a lot of my stuff for really cheap. Um, so yeah. Now we'll go ahead and get started and I will start showing you the bags, which is what everybody came here for. But I always love giving that introduction. And to end that introduction, if you're interested in seeing more of my content, my collection, photos, and all that good stuff, feel free to head over to my Instagram at the Louis Vuitton Princess. And if you're hoping to shop with me, consign with me, or source with me, feel free to follow Shop LV Princess on Instagram as well. And if you're interested in one of my other blogs, it is called Vuitton in Black, and I highlight Y2K era African American fashion. So all of those links will all be found on the Louis Vuitton Princess page on Instagram. So start there and you'll find your way to everything else. So let's get started. And I'm sorry that was a long intro. I try not to ramble, but it's like, I know this is probably gonna be the first big video. So if you're new, welcome, and it's nice to meet you. So I have to figure out where I'm gonna start. I used to film these videos all the time when I had a smaller collection and it was relatively easy to do, but now this is kind of a daunting task. So I'm gonna figure out where to start. I think I'm gonna start in here. So the first bag I'm gonna show you guys is my Louis Vuitton Elisa. So this is the Louis Vuitton Multicolor Elisa. Um, it is one of those Y2K era bags. Um, so it's a little sort of shoulder bag. It's a smaller bag. I'm gonna sh I'm showing this one first because a lot of people really ask me questions. Like I get a lot of questions about this bag. Um, so it is a Y2K era bag. It is the Louis Vuitton Elisa multicolor monogram and this is the multicolor Blanc. So multicolor comes in two main variations. It comes in the Blanc, which is the white background and it comes in the Noir, which is the black background. Um, so this is a smaller shoulder strap bag. I paid a hundred dollars for this bag. So again, I paid very little for a lot of this stuff. I paid a hundred dollars for this bag. Um, this was a local sale, meaning I found someone selling it locally and I brought it very quickly for obvious reasons. And so as you can see, this is probably my best condition Louis Vuitton bag. Um, the patina is extremely light. This is a bag that I would call a dust bag resident. This is the only flaw and this was my fault. I think I got hand sanitizer on it. 
rip, but it's whatever. I paid $100 for it. Um, so this is my best condition Louis Vuitton bag. Very light patina. Um, and just some fun, fast facts about the Elisa is this pocket is an actual pocket. It is not just like for aesthetics. Um, and so yeah, this is the Louis Vuitton Multicolor Blanc Elisa. I'm going to be rolling a lot in my rolly chair today, so just bear with me because I know that's kind of irritating. Um, <laughs> so the next bag, I'm probably going to end up showing you guys a lot of multicolor just up front because that's kind of how I have it organized. So bear with me. So the next bag I'm going to show you guys is my Louis Vuitton Multicolor Blanc Beverly GM. So this is another one of those Louis Vuitton bags that I personally feel like is quite underrated. Um, so the Beverly GM is the large size of the Beverly collection. So the Louis Vuitton Beverly's come in three sizes. There's a PM, a MM, and a GM. The PM is a very small sort of clutch size. The MM is a larger, about like this big sort of barrel-esque style bag. And then this is the GM, which has the top handles. This is one of those collections where it was made in multicolor monogram and um, in the traditional Louis Vuitton style. So some Louis Vuitton bags like the Elisa, for example, that is only a bag that you're going to find in multicolor monogram. It was not made in the traditional Louis Vuitton canvases. But this bag is a bag that does originate um, in the traditional Louis Vuitton canvases as well. So this bag I purchased for, I believe, $3.99. Again, I brought really cheap. Um, I had a friend who was selling it and they were kind of going through a hard time and just needed the money. And they were like, hey, I'm just gonna sell it really cheap. Do you want it before I post it up on like Facebook for all the vultures? <laughs> and I was like, yes, I will take it off your hands. So. This is my Beverly GM. She is very pretty. This bag is not in perfect condition, but again, I brought it from a friend and I brought it very cheap. And these bags sell for a lot more than $3.99 now, but I really love this bag because it's one of the larger multicolor monogram styles. You don't see too many large multicolor monogram styles. Um, and I'm kind of a large bag girl, so I really like the larger bags. So now, I think I'm gonna try to mix it up just a little bit and pull something else. So this is the next bag I'm going to show you guys and this is my Louis Vuitton Locket MM. So the Locket is another bag that comes in multiple sizes. It comes in the PM, the MM, and the GM. If you're not familiar with um, those sizes, PM is the small, MM is the medium, GM is the large. So this is the MM, it is the medium size bag and this is the limited edition version of the Locket. So there are there's the regular locket and the limited edition locket. This is the limited edition version and I personally prefer this version. Um, so this is one of the first Louis Vuitton bags that I was ever really, really attracted and drawn to. They were very expensive. These I believe retailed around the $3,000 price point. And back when I first got into Louis Vuitton many, many years ago, this was completely out of affordability for me. Um, but this was a bag that was sort of a special treat. I worked at one of my internships over the summer. I think I left this out in my introduction, but I'm an engineer by training and profession. Um, I work in the sort of space robotics energy sector um, as an engineer. So that's just like that sort of background. But anyways, again, self-made woman. I worked very hard for all this stuff um, and I still do. So anyways, so this was one of my treats I got for myself after I completed one of my engineering internships and I wanted something really nice. So this bag I purchased on eBay for $12.50, I believe. So a very, very good price, very far away from the over 3K retail price. And I really like it. It really gives me sort of like Birkin-esque vibes because it has the very sturdy, um, uh, very sturdy handles at the top that are very pronounced and prominent. Um, the sort of shape, you know, it kind of gives me Birkin-esque vibes. I am not a Birkin girl. I was literally just talking with somebody about this on my Instagram the other day. Like for some reason, Hermes people think everybody wants an Hermes bag. I really don't want an Hermes bag. I really am a Louis Vuitton girl. So this is sort of my Louis Vuitton Birkin and it has this very adorable long clochette. It has feet which I also really like. And as you can see, it's more of a hard sided bag. It's not hard sided as in like luggage, but as you can see, 
the canvas is very much so molded. Um, it's not a floppy bag. So I really like that. So now let's hop back over here again. I'm sorry for the rolling in the rolly chair. I'm probably going to do that a lot today. So the next bag we're going to take a look at. This is actually my newest Louis Vuitton purchase. It is the Multicolor Blanc Blanc. Um, so this is a favorite bag for me. So I'm not going to talk too much about this one because since it's a newer purchase for me, I actually have an entire video already on my YouTube for this bag. So feel free to go over to, um, my channel and find my unboxings because this is one of my unboxings. So this is the Belong. I paid $5.75 for this bag. I mentioned in my video where I unboxed this bag that this is actually my third Belong. Um, I had two that were multicolor noir. I ended up selling both of those. I brought those for very, very cheap, like $180 or something. And I don't know, for some reason, the Boulogne style has just been speaking to me recently. I really wanted another one and I ended up on the multicolor Blanc. And I'm honestly really happy with that decision. I think this bag is absolutely gorgeous. It's super beautiful, um, very gently used. Um, and so I'm a big fan of this bag. So the next bag I'm gonna show you guys is my Louis Vuitton Theta GM in multicolor Blanc. I need to fix my, there we go, in multicolor Blanc. So this bag I purchased from a group on Facebook. Um, the Theta GM is one of those sort of, y, it's very quintessential Y2K, um, mostly because it has some of those Y2K features. It has the big tassels, most prominently the giant buckle. There are some little studs, very Y2K. I mean, like you look at this bag and it kind of just like screams Paris Hilton. Like this is definitely the type of bag that you would have seen in that era of women walking around in juicy couture tracksuits with this sort of bag on their arm excuse me, so very quintessential Y2K bag. I absolutely love this one. I think I paid like, I don't remember the exact price for this one, but it was in the 500s. It was a cheaper bag. Um, and so I really like this bag. This bag is not in perfect condition, but I paid under price for the GM. The person I brought this from had it listed as the PM. Um, I of course wasn't going to correct them on that. So I think that's why they ended up selling it cheaper because they listed it as the PM when it was the GM. So this bag I really like because it's fun if you're going out in the summertime and you just sort of have a few small items that you want to carry. It's a really good bag for that. So I think I now have finished all the bags that are in my light box. So now let's switch over to something else. So, okay. The next bag I'm going to show you guys is my Louis Vuitton Sac Supple 35. So this is a very much so vintage bag from the 90s. The Sac Supple comes in a lot of sizes. I have two sizes of Sac Supple. This is the 35, which is the more sort of handbag size. Think about Speedy 35. And I also have the Sac Supple 55, which is the luggage version of this bag. So I purchased this bag at one point when I really wanted a Speedy 35 and Speedy 35s at that time had gotten really high. And I also wanted something a little bit different from the Speedy 35. So I purchased the Sac Supple. Um, this is a bag I think I paid around like $3.99 for. It was on the cheaper end. I purchased it from a Facebook group. And I really love this bag. It's really good for if you want to use it as a purse, you know, you can put a little charm. I always tell people if you put a clochette on it, it kind of looks like the Sofia Coppola Speedies. I know I butchered that. Again, if you're new to meeting me, I don't try to say Say all the names of this stuff properly like I really don't have the time so if that's going to be an issue for you I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not your girl I don't care enough um so yeah if you put a clochette on it it's kind of like a bargain Sofia Coppola speedy which I think is pretty cool and I also just really love vintage styles so it's one of those bags where it's very functional you can use it as a handbag you can use it as a carry-on you can use it as a sort of weekender um so lots of multifunctional uses for this bag the next bag I'm gonna show you is one of my rarer bags it is my Louis Vuitton multicolor monogram i love lv sac retro so this bag is a pretty rare gem um 
as you can see, it features the traditional multicolor monogram canvas, but it has these little eyes. So this is a very limited release from the multicolor monogram series. And there are more of these. There's the I love you, the I dare you, I think the I miss you. There's a couple bags from this collection. They're all very, very beautiful. Um, if you go on Instagram, I think, oh gosh, Jane Maldonado, I think that's how you pronounce your name. And if it's not, I'm very sorry. Um, but she is the queen of the sort of like rare multicolor monogram bags. I think she has this entire collection. So if this is a collection, this is the only bag that I have from that collection. But if this is a collection that you're interested in, the um, multicolor monogram eye collection, she's the person to check out. She has a lot of those bags. So this is the multicolor monogram I Love You Sack Retro. It is the typical Sack Retro. The Sack Retro style you can see featured in a couple different multi in a couple different Louis Vuitton collections. Uh, most predominantly, there is a Louis Vuitton Cherry Blossom Sack Retro. So it is one that you can find. Um, so again, it features a lot of the signature multicolor Mirakami Takeshi uh, Mirakami sort of vibes. It has the big bow it has the studs lots of detailing um which i personally really enjoy and one of the most special features about this bag that i always show when i show it is because it was such a limited release it actually has here which number um this bag was so this was bag number 1134 and it was made in spain so that's a pretty cool um little stamp or marking that this bag has that I really enjoy. So I'm going to try to keep moving here because I'm new to YouTube. So it's like, I'm not sure how long I can necessarily film on YouTube. And then I also don't know how long everybody's attention span is. So this is a video series that's probably going to have a couple parts. So bear with me because I want to try to keep the videos around the 30 minute ish mark so bear with me so the next bag i'm going to show you guys is the louis vuitton multicolor monogram blanc speedy 30. so again this is one of those quintessential y2k bags that everyone had kim kardashian eve raven simone um little kim ashanti very very prominent bag from the y2k era um so it's like i honestly feel like if you're going to be a louis vuitton collector you absolutely have to have one of these because it is such a signature style um and so this bag i'm not going to talk about too much other than a really fun fact about this bag is this is my louis vuitton bag that i got for free i've only gotten two louis vuitton bags for free this is one of them so there's a really fun story behind that that i'll probably share at a later time um but yeah the louis vuitton multicolor blanc speedy 30. so i'm gonna have to probably get up to get the next bag so just like or maybe I'll hold off on that later and move it closer. So the next bag I'm going to show you guys instead. And this feature, this is a two for one because it also has another Louis Vuitton accessory. Is my Louis Vuitton Series Speedy 25. And sorry, it's a little bit, I unstuffed it recently. So it's like lost a little shape here, but that's okay. So this is the, sorry, my hair is stuck. Uh, there we go. See, I'm a regular person, just like you. So this is the multicolor speedy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have so many multicolor bags that you'll find so often when I'm introducing them. I will just start with multicolor because it's like my brain just assumes that's what it is. This is the Louis Vuitton Cherry Speedy 25, also known as the Siri Speedy. This was a Mirakami collection that came out in 2005. I believe this collection was only released in 2005, which is something that makes these bags sort of easier to authenticate is if you see one and it says it was made in a year other than 2005, it's not real. So it features these adorable little cherry characters, which I really love. This is another one of those bag styles that was not popular for quite a few years. And so people were selling them very cheap for a while. And now I usually see these selling close to, if not over 2K. Um, 
So this was a two for one. So I also have my little panda charm, which is also a Takeshi Murakami Louis Vuitton piece. Um, I used to have the panda pouchette, but I sold it a few years ago. It wasn't really my style, but I wanted to keep the little panda charm. So, ooh, I just realized I haven't been telling prices. Ooh, okay, I forgot the price on the sack retro. That's the price I forgot. So, boop, let me pop this back in. I paid $7.50 for this one, which is a very good price for that bag. So for these two, I paid $1,000 for the um, Cherry Speedy 25, and I paid $100 for the Charm, which even for that Charm is a very good price because the Charm I have on mine is in pristine condition, and these Charms sell for usually around $300 or so. The next bag I'm going to show you guys is a pretty sentimental bag to me. This is my Totally MM and this is another two for one. So this is the Damier Bean Totally MM. Um, this bag I purchased after my first year of college and this is sort of a sentimental one for me because this was like my first sort of nice Louis Vuitton bag I purchased or like modern Louis Vuitton bag. All the bags that I'd purchased before this were all sort of like older vintage condition bags. Um, this bag I think was like a 2014 so this was like a more modern Louis Vuitton bag one of the nicer Louis Vuitton bags I have and so one of the big questions that people always ask me is when do I feel like Louis Vuitton quality started to decline and I would say probably around the like 2013 14 15 time frame is around when the quality started to decline because as you can see this is I believe a 2013 or 14 bag very good condition and this is not a bag that I have babied I have used this bag for everything. It is my workhorse bag. It is my airport bag. I use it for a lot of stuff, but this is a very sentimental bag. And then I also have my Louis Vuitton tortoise insolence bag charm. I really love tortoise stuff. So this bag, this bag charm is really cute to me. The insolence charm comes in a couple other styles, um, but I'm a big fan of this charm. I really like it. And I don't remember the exact price for the charm, I think, but I know it was under 200. Like, I think I paid like 140 or something for this charm. It was pretty cheap. Um, and the bag I paid, I think 12, I think I paid like 1200 for it, um, which looking back on it, I was kind of young and dumb. This is when I first got into Louis Vuitton. I paid 1200 for it, even though they were 1400 new from the store. But this is back when I was still like a poor college student. So saving $200 actually kind of mattered to me. But it's like now it's like if something just cost a couple hundred dollars more, I'm just going to buy it new. But this was a different era in my life. However, I still really love